And today we're going to talk about writing conditional statements. All right, and a couple things to talk about first. Um, you defined these terms yesterday. I, I don't know how much of it stuck with you, or how much of it didn't. But we're gonna, we're gonna say that inductive reasoning yes. Inductive reasoning is the process of making a statement based on past and current data. That statement is called a conjecture. Conjecture. A counter example shows a conjecture, or don't say that. Hang on a minute. A counter example. describes a situation showing the conjecture false. Does that make sense? So you look at some data, you think about some data, current data, past data, and you make a statement based on the data. That statement that you make or write is called a conjecture. An example of your conjecture being false or not true is called a counterexample. Everybody all right with that? So let's see if there's a... Um, not really a real good example in the book. Look at page 77, number 8.
Page 77, number 8 says, show that each conjecture is false by finding a counterexample. It says, Kennedy is the youngest U.S. president to be inaugurated. Is that true or false? False. 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 So what's a counterexample? Roosevelt was inaugurated at 42. Okay. It's just a statement showing that a conjecture is false. That's all it is. It's got a big fancy name, it's called a counterexample, but that's all it is and that's all it does. Got it? All right, very good. So now we're going to flip over to page 81 and talk about conditional statements. A conditional statement. can be written in the form if p then q Where P is the hypothesis, and Q is the conclusion. The lowercase p is the symbol for hypothesis. The lowercase q is the symbol for conclusion. The symbol for a conditional statement is, it looks like this, and it is read if p then q. The hypothesis of a statement follows the if And the conclusion follows the then. So if you look in your book on page 81, example one, identifying the parts of a conditional statement. Identify the hypothesis and the conclusion of each statement, of each conditional. If a butterfly has a curved black line on its hind wing, then it is a viceroy. I don't know what that word is. Is that right? Viceroy? 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 No biology majors in here? Viceroy? 
What's the hypothesis of that statement? What follows the if? Yeah, a butterfly has a curved black line on its hind wing. That's the hypothesis of the statement. The hypothesis does not include the word if. It's what follows the if. What's the conclusion of that statement? It's a viceroy. It is a viceroy. Okay? Not the word then, just what follows the then. Got it? Look at the next example. Now, the next example. A number is an integer if it is a natural number. What's missing in that statement? There's not a then in there, is there? So you got to use a little bit of, I don't know, maybe inductive reasoning or just common sense and say that what follows the if is the hypothesis. Agreed? So what does that make everything else? The conclusion, right? So maybe if there's an if missing or a then missing, you got to use process of elimination. All right, so in that case, the hypothesis would be What's the hypothesis there? That the number is a natural number. It is a natural number. Agreed? The hypo hypothesis would be a number is a natural number. What's the conclusion? The number is an integer. Okay? So do you see how, how you have to work with it a little bit when there's not an if and a then and it's straightforward? You've got to use process of elimination. Okay, look at the, uh, check it out. Identify the hypothesis and conclusion of the statement. A number is divisible by 3 if it is divisible by 6. What's the hypothesis? It is divisible by 6. It is divisible by 6. Good. What's the conclusion? A number is divided by 3. A number is divisible by 3. Make sense? Very good. Nice job. Turn the page. Do you remember what truth value means? Did you have to define that yesterday? Yeah. And what was the definition? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's whether a statement is true or false. What's the truth value of that statement? Very good, it's true. Does anybody agree? So everybody disagrees with Ava. Oh, you agree? Okay. No, the statement about a truth value. Correct. Yeah. He's talking about the truth value of truth value. What is its truth value? True. Ava says it's true, but only about three people agree with her. Four people now. Five people now. You're growing in popularity. Almost the whole class. You disagree? You agree? Just no show of now you agree. Very good. So everybody okay today with maybe identifying hypothesis and conclusion? Yes. Could you write a conditional statement if you were given a hypothesis and conclusion? Yes. You would put the statement in if-then form, right? Let's see if there's a... Uh... Let's try it. Let's write a conditional. Write a conditional statement from each of the following. The midpoint M of a segment
bisects the segment. So now we're going to write it as a conditional statement. What does a conditional statement have to have in it? If and then, very good. So how can we write this as a conditional? Can we say that if M is the midpoint, of a segment, then, then what? Then it bisects the statement. Isn't that what I said? Yeah, but I meant segment. It's not necessarily what I say. It's what I mean. Okay. I still meant segment. If M is the midpoint of a segment, then it bisects the segment. Truth value? True. Some of you think it's true. Anybody think it's false? Okay, nice job. Any questions? Not real difficult, right? Okay. Very good. All right, your assignment for today is going to start on page 84. Three through six. Um, actually, before I give you that, let's talk about one other thing. Um, let's let me give you the what a Venn diagram. The Venn diagram of a conditional. Because this shows up in the practice and it shows up on your study guide and quiz, okay? So Venn diagram is when you got like the circles, right? The hypothesis is in your little circle. And everything in the big circle is the conclusion. What that Venn diagram means is that if P, then Q. All right? If P, then Q. So if I gave you this picture, and I said this, Right? And I said this. What would the conditional statement be for that Venn diagram? Or, first of all, what's the hypothesis? An animal's a dog, maybe? What, what is the conclusion? It bites. Okay. What would the conditional statement be? If it's a dog, then it bites. What is the truth value? True. It is true. Yeah. It's true. Because if it's a dog, it bites. You know why? Because it's got teeth. Wait, but my neighbor's dog doesn't have teeth. 
All right, let's adjust the hypothesis then to <laughs> if it is a dog with teeth, okay, then it bites. That's better, isn't it? I invited a friend over to my house one time. We were having a football party get together, and I, we were all on the back porch and in the swimming pool, and he said, yeah, I'll be there in about five minutes, and five minutes went by, 10 minutes went by, 20 minutes went by. I finally called him, and I said, where are you? He goes, man, I'm sitting in my car in front of your house. I said, what are you doing? He goes, you got a dog. <laughs> I said, yeah, I know. He don't bite. He goes, that dog's got teeth. I'm not coming in. <laughs> oh, boy, stayed in the car. He was so scared when he came in, too. And it was really a sweet dog. He didn't bite. You get the point? Hypothesis is in the little circle. Conclusions in the big circle. <laughs> All right. If it's a dog with teeth, then it bites. Truth value is true. Very well done. Your assignment for today is going to start on page 84. You just got to read what the question says and then answer it. Three through eleven. Sixteen to eighteen. And then thirty four to thirty six. All right, and let's try to get back in the head in the uh, habit of checking headline for homework. 